Hello boys and girls, it's Fog, and once again, welcome back to Redstone 101. Today, we're going to start out talking about NOR latches, specifically the RS NOR latch. So, do you want to remember when something's happened? Perhaps you want to remember when a button's been pressed. So, how do you do that? Well... That's what an RS NOR latch is good for. So, what exactly is an RS NOR latch? Well, the name RS NOR latch, like many of the names of the redstone circuits we've been talking about, comes from the world of electronics. The R and the S refer to the circuit inputs. They stand for reset and set, respectively. There's the set, there's the reset. The NOR is short for not OR, and it's there because in electronics usually you build a NOR latch by combining inverted OR gates, or not OR NOR, get it? So a latch is a circuit which changes state, but only in response to an input. In this case, the output which we'll pull off here, is usually designated Q, uh, is low until the set input is triggered, at which point it remains high until the reset input is triggered. So this is the simplest of all RS NOR latches in Minecraft. It's just a couple of blocks, a couple of torches, and some redstone. When this block is brought high, it turns off this torch, which turns on that torch, which keeps this signal on and keeps this high, even though we're no longer providing any input. So perhaps as a better illustration, we could do this. Uh, pull this out here. We'll put a, rep a repeater here and some redstone and a lever so that you can see that there the, our input is being held high it's no longer high and yet the output is still high now if we hit the reset it drops low again this works exactly as that one does when this is brought high that torch turns off which allows this torch to turn on which keeps the signal sustained now if we trigger the input again, look at that, it switches and stays switched. So that is a very simple RS NOR latch. Simplest one in Minecraft. So I'd like to show you a couple of other designs as well. So here's another design. The difference being that in this case the set and the reset are both next to each other which can be a little convenient. Put a torch back here. This time we're going to put a repeater here. The sole purpose of this repeater is to make sure that this redstone connects with that block. Otherwise it would just connect with that torch. We could just as easily get rid of this repeater and move this, whoops, sorry, move that out here. That would work as well. So now it's on now it's off. So the advantage of using the repeater is that the, it allows us to make the circuit significantly smaller. So here we have on and off. Set and reset. And we'll just pop a lamp back there and hook it to the output so that we can get a better visual indication of that. So there you go. The other thing that you could do would be to put your output off that torch. Of course, then it's inverted, but 
you know, in this case, that case, this is set and this is reset, but that's okay. So there you go. Actually, let's do that. There we go. Set, reset. So it's another RS NOR latch. There's one more RS NOR latch that I like to use a lot, and this one is a vertical design. And it goes like this. Put a little bit of redstone on the top, put a torch there, put a torch over here, and a little bit of redstone down there. Now the inputs in this case are a bottom block here and an upper block up here. Either, either of these two upper blocks will do. So if I signal this one, now that's on. Signal this one, now it's off. And you can run your output from over here or you can run it from up there, whatever works for you. So there it's on, that's set, that's reset. So there you go, RS NOR latch. Now let's talk about T flip flops. A T flip flop is something that you'll see a lot in redstone creations. It often will incorporate an RS NOR latch, such as this one right here. It's like a NOR latch in that it only changes state in response to an input. But in this case, it changes state whenever the input is signaled. It basically acts like a toggle switch. Trigger it once and it turns on. Trigger it again and it turns off and so on. So here's one design of a, of a T flip flop. There are several. So in this case, we're going to put a few blocks here. Okay, so we start with our RSNOR latch, add this little H-like thing over here, cover this in redstone, put a little bit of redstone there and some redstone there. Now I'm going to put a block right on top of this redstone, and its job is to break the circuit between, break the connection between that redstone and that redstone down there. So now this torch connects to this block, but not to this redstone, and that's going to be important later on. Okay, we're going to put a, uh, I'm going to put a, uh, a repeater there set to four ticks and a repeater here set to one. And now we'll add a couple of torches. We're going to put a redstone torch here. We're going to put a redstone torch here. And we're going to put a redstone torch here. And we're going to add our input right here. And our output is this torch right there. And let's just put a lamp on top of that so we can see it easier. So when I click it, the lamp goes on. And when I click it again, the lamp goes off. So that is a T flip-flop. Basically turns a button into a toggle switch. Okay, this is a T flip-flop designed by a YouTuber named Maggie Paul. I first saw it mentioned on Cube Hamster's channel. And uh, I really like this one for its simplicity. And uh, it's, you know, it's just really easy to see what's going on and it's really easy to build. So we'll start with, uh, this one's also built around an RS NOR latch. And this is, uh, this is the NOR latch back here, this guy. So there's our basic RS NOR latch. Now we're also going to add a couple of repeaters and some redstone. We'll add a little dot of redstone there. We're going to add two repeaters here and here, each of which set to four ticks. And we're going to add a repeater here set at the default. That repeater is set at the default as well. And then we'll just put some redstone there put a redstone torch right there and another redstone torch there and a dot of redstone right there and that's it now our input is this block right here and our output is that torch on the RS NOR latch right there or I guess we could just as easily use this one here you see when I click on the input it toggles the output so it's a very clean T flip-flop. One of the things that I really like about Maggie Paul's design is that it's really easy to see what's going on. This is, here is an RS NOR latch. This block here is the input for the set. This is the S input. 
This block here is the R import, or the reset input. When I click this button here, it's going to turn that torch off, but it's also going to send a signal through this block and through that redstone. And so one tick after I press this button, that's going to trigger the set, which is going to turn the lamp on. This torch goes off, but these repeaters here are going to hold this signal high long enough that this torch can't come back on. And that means that the signal doesn't get reset. The RS Norlatch doesn't get reset. So there you go. Notice that these repeaters stay on just long enough for the button to finish its cycle. Okay, so... Now that it's on, when we push this button, that's going to turn this torch off, but nothing is holding this signal high, so that's going to drop this signal, allow that torch to turn on, which is going to allow this reset to be pressed. And that's going to happen one tick after the signal gets sent through here, which is going to allow this to turn off. There you go. Very simple. It's a great design. And finally, I wanted to end up with the most compact T flip flop that I'm aware of in the game. And here's how you build it. Dig a little hole, put a redstone torch at the bottom, put a piston there, and put a piston there facing each other. Put a block there, and a block there, and a block there. Put a little bit of redstone dust there, Put a redstone torch there and a redstone torch there, and you are done. Then either of these blocks can act as the input, and your output is right here. Now it's on. Now it's off. This is taking advantage of a little bit of a piston quirk, piston update quirk. Uh, when we trigger this button, these blocks are going to be powered, and these blocks are going to be unpowered. Then when the button releases, the power state switches, and that confuses the pistons just enough that they change state, moving that block back and forth. We'll take advantage of that behavior again next episode. But uh, just understand that it's the act of both these redstone, blo these blocks here and the redstone torches changing state that cause the pistons to switch. When the block is over the torch, the block is powered by the torch, and that causes this redstone right here to draw power from the block and light the lamp. There you go. It's very small, very consistent. Uh, it's a great little design. The only downside to this design is that it makes a little bit of noise. So if you don't like hearing pistons, go with one of these. But if you like, don't mind the piston noise, this is awful hard to beat. Well, that's about all we have time for today. Uh, tune in next time, and we'll talk about block update detectors. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you again next time.